So the next thing I did was set up some basic floor constraints and finger IK. First of all, in this video, I'm going to create a plane at 0, 0, 0 underneath the mannequin, enter edit mode and scale it by 8. That should be plenty of space to animate on. And then we're going to select the UE4 tools rig, grab hold of that foot main IK bone, and we're going to add a floor constraint to it with a target of the plane that we just created. Then we can go back into edit mode, with that bone still selected, and when I'm done messing with that 3D cursor again, we'll orient from the normal of the bone. We'll drag it down its Y axis until the head of the bone is just above the floor, about five millimeters. I find a good number to be. It doesn't need to be precisely on, but just as close to five millimeters as you can get. This is the mannequin, so it doesn't have to be exact. We have a little bit of play. Then we'll symmetrize that change across. Good old armature symmetrize. And then we can remove the custom shapes from those two IK foot main bones so we can see what they're doing a bit better. And then we have feet that won't go through the floor. And there's one more thing I wanted to do to these, which is they are currently parented to a bone that is parented to the root. And for the way I like to do root motion animation, I don't like that, I don't want that. I want them to behave like the hands do. So I'll select both both those red minor, main IK bones and enter edit mode, Alt P, clear parent. And these bones were attached to that IK foot root, they're not now. And it's okay that we moved them because they aren't actually the targets for the IK. If they were the targets for the IK, it caused problems. And now they stay back when we move the root bone, which is what I want them to do. So yeah, that's about done with those. For now, they don't go through the floor and they don't move with the root. There's this handy little mechanism here which is present on the UE4 tools mannequin for putting the fo foot up on its toe. That's also parented to that red main IK bone, but I haven't had too many problems with it. It doesn't actually mirror animation though, so just before we start animating, I'll fix that. That's, I've got that recorded a little bit later on. Now it's on to the finger IK. I have a much better means of doing floor constraints for the hands and for the feet for climbing, but that's in another video, because I just want to do the basic method here. Now this this copy, ro copy, copy rotation mechanism here works great for basic animation. All three of those bones in the thumb are copying the rotation of that paddle bone, that underscore all bone, okay? So it tells, it, tells the thumb bone where to turn. Now, I'm not actually going to get rid of that, although I could do. I'm not going to swap it for the IK. So we'll, enter, we'll take the end of the digit, we'll duplicate it using snapping, and with a pivot point of individual origins, we'll snap it to the tail of the bone that we duplicated it from to create the IK target. And then we'll parent it to that paddle bone. Okay? So and then we'll get rid of its copy rotation and we'll take off its custom shape and now we have the target for our IK so we select the end digit the bone at the end of end of the thumb and we're going to add an inverse kinematics constraint the target is of course going to be the target we just created so we'll find that set that up and we're going to need to set a chain length of three so now, when we rotate that thumb, if we turn off snapping, when we rotate it, the copy rotation is still happening, but the thumb is now following 
that IK target, which is what we want. So we can rotate the paddle, and when we take off the transformation lock, the transform lock on the location there, we can then move the thumb bone to exactly where we want it. So we'd keyframe the paddle to roughly where the thumb should be, and then we can get the thumb exactly in place using the inverse kinematics. So it just adds an extra sort of level to moving fingers around. So you can get things really precise. And it was also compatible with the floor constraint. You can turn the IK on and off because that bone is snapped directly to the head, so it doesn't need to move anywhere to get to the IK target. And we can add the floor constraint to the target and set just set that to the plane. And that's about it. Now we can do the same thing for all the fingers. We can duplicate and snap the ends of each finger, parent them to all the all bones, remove all their custom shapes, set up all the IK, and give them all their floor constraints. And again, if we remember to turn off snapping, we now have fingers that will work like the same, just the same as the thumb. We rotate the paddle to get roughly where you want the finger to be, and then use the IK to get more exact finger movement. Remembering to keyframe both bones because the, the target is parented to the paddle. You could parent the targets to the hand and then you wouldn't need to keyframe the paddle but I just find it slightly easier to rotate those paddles to get where I want to go. Now I left this bit in because I made a mistake and some people if you made the same mistake you might wonder what the hell is going on when you start trying to do stuff with it. So what's happened is I've forgotten to set the chain length on one of those fingertips. So we have this crazy, crazy stuff going on where that one little like, piece of IK is trying to IK everything because it's got a chain length of zero. So we give it a chain length of three and everything will be fine and dandy. Thought I'd leave that in there in case someone made the same mistake. Then rotating around the active element, a useful little trick for many acrobatic animations. We can rotate everything around the pelvis to drop it slightly. And I'll show you how the fingers work in relation to the floor. So this IK system won't stop the fingers from going through the floor, but it'll make them try not to go through the floor. The IK may, so may still drift if you put the hand too close the floor but if you locate the fingers onto the floor first you then have a system where you can keep the fingers in place say if you were having your mannequin doing press-ups and you need the hands to kind of flex you the fingers are going to be able to stay in the roughly the same place now a word about IK stiffness which I haven't done yet that's in the next video the without the IK stiffness you'll get little errors like this but it can work as it is because of the copy rotation mechanism. If you're very careful with your rotation, you don't need the IK stiffness. You can correct most things just by rotating those paddles because the copy rotation will work alongside the IK and it will work alongside the IK stiffness too to further reduce the margin of error. You can take it off with the IK stiffness though if you wanted to because sometimes it makes things a little bit buggy. Now we just need to get everything across to the other hand as well as easily as possible can't do too much about the IK that has to be done manually but we can select all of those targets and then once we have them all selected we can enter edit mode and just like we did with the feet we can symmetrize them and it will create all the new bones on the other side where they're supposed to be because the mannequin is symmetrical so they should go into place where they're supposed to. They'll also keep their floor constraints, so we won't have to set those up. Then we just need to go through each each digit and set up the inverse kinematics, making sure we set the new target correctly and making sure we set the chain length to three as well. So we don't want to don't want to make that mistake again. So I'll whiz through all of those. And that's this video just about done. So next I'm going to go through the IK stiffness for 
everything. All the legs, all the arms and the fingers.